I don't think we have a shred of free will. Um, despite, you know, 95% of philosophers and I think probably the majority of neuroscientists saying that we have free will in at least some circumstances, I don't think there's any at all. Um, and the reason for this is you do something, you behave, you make a choice, whatever. And to understand why you did that, where did that intention come from? Um, part of it was due to like the sensory environment you were in in the previous minute. Some of it is from the hormone levels in your bloodstream that morning. Some of it is from whether you had a wonderful or stressful last three months and what sort of neuroplasticity happened. Part of it is what hormone levels you were exposed to as a fetus. Part of it is what culture your ancestors came up with and thus how you were parented when you were a kid. All of those are in there and you can't understand where behavior is coming from without incorporating all of those. <clears throat> and at that point, not only are there all of these relevant factors, but they're ultimately all one factor. If you're talking about what evolution has to do with your behavior, by definition, you're also talking about genetics. If you're talking about what your genes have to do with behavior, by definition, you're talking about how your brain was constructed or what proteins are coded for. If you're talking about like your mood disorder now, you're talking about the sense of efficacy you were getting as a five-year-old. They're all intertwined. And when you look at all those influences, basically like the challenge is show me a neuron that just caused that behavior or show me a network of neurons that just caused that behavior and show me that nothing about what they just did was influenced by anything from the sensory environment one second ago to the evolution of your species. And there's no space in there to fit in a free will concept that winds up being, you know, in your brain.